Stay tuned for the following special presentation from KOFO, 1220 and 103.7 FM. KOFO, your sports source for East Central Kansas. Now on 103.7 FM, welcomes you to the Ottawa University Braves Wise Guys Construction Pregame Show. Whether it's residential, commercial, or restoration construction you need, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa at 785-229-5651. Now for a preview of this OU Brave sports broadcast, let's join KOFO's David Potter. And we are still in Salina. You are listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO, and this is the Wise Guys Construction pregame show for the OU men's basketball team. Hoping to uh, get a little better result than what happened in the first game where the women's team went down 80-55 to 55 after a rough second half. But onward and upward as the 2-5 uh, and five Braves look to take on the 3-3 three and three Coyotes of Kansas Wesleyan. Wesleyan is 1-1 one and one in KCAC play so far. The Braves are 0-2 looking to get that first win. Here's how the season has gone for them. Wesleyan so far, they opened up playing at Grace University, lost by 15, 72-57, but rebounded with a win over Central College, or Central Christian College, who was receiving votes at the time of the game. Won that one 80-73, so a nice victory for them there. Then they went on the road, played Doan University, and lost that one by double digits, 86-73. But back and forth they went as they played out at Mountain Marty College and won that won that by double digits, 92-75, their highest scoring game of the year. But again, it's been win-loss, win-loss, win-loss as they went right back and played at St. Mary for their first KCAC game. Lost that one by double digits, 87-75. And then they just snuck by McPherson on Saturday with an 83-81 victory. So for Wesleyan, much like with their women's team the minutes are a little more spread around where identical to the women's team the men's team for OU has three players who average more than 30 minutes a game and nobody averages more than 28 and a half for Wesleyan so they're able to spread things out just a little more their leading scorer is Ryan Hill not much of a shooter but 15 and a half points a game mostly off of two-point scoring. He, he does shoot efficiently from three-point range as he's 8 of 13 on the year for a 62% rate, but only 13 shots in six games, so only putting it up twice a game. So and that's a guy who's really just looking to put it up when he's left wide open. So he's somebody you have to keep an eye on from outside, but doesn't seem to be looking to press that shot. But from two-point range, he's... 26 of 39, so an incredibly effective shooter no matter where he is on the court. And again, with team high 15 and a half points per game. Dominic Johnson, second on the team, was just shy of 13 points a game. He's put up 24 threes and hit 11 of them, so he's a 46% three-point shooter. Very good rate in his own right. And then 26 of 53 overall, so 49% shooter in general. So this is efficient scoring coming from the top for Kansas Wesleyan. And then there are other player averaging double digits, averaging 11.2 a game is Terrell Gandy. And he's shooting 38% from outside, 15 of 40. He's shot the most times of anyone on the team, 40 times and hit 15 of them. So a 37.5% three-point clip for him. So those are all guys you're going to have to look out for from outside. So there will need to be good perimeter defense for OU. They're going to stop this Wesleyan team that's shooting 38% as a team from beyond the arc and 45% overall this year. We'll take a quick break and then we'll be back to talk a little about OU here on the Wise Guys Construction pregame show on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM. 
Anyone can call themselves a construction company, slap a sign on the side of their truck, and drive around town looking for work. Is that who you want to hire? No, you're smarter than that. Wise Guys Construction at 108 North Main in Ottawa has been in business for 13 years, building new residential homes, adding additions and finishing basements, solving commercial structure needs for businesses, and repairing damage left behind from fire or water. When it comes to who you hire for residential and commercial construction needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction at 785-229-5651. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. And we are back in Salina. This is the Wise Guys Construction pregame show as the OU Braves men's team ready to take on the Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes. Again, the OU men's team sitting at 2-5 and five right now. They started the season off with a loss to Baker, 78-64. They win, then played Avila and won big, 87-70. So things were looking good at that point, but then turned around the next day. They suffered a 14-point loss to Graceland, but then turned around and about a week later put up 112 points against Crowley's Ridge in the Hampton Inn Classic, winning 112-105. But then a bit of a seesaw for them to start the season, just like it was for Wesley, and as they went and played Haskell Indian Nation University and lost 87-72. Then they started KCAC play, lost by 10 at home to Southwestern, and then went on the road to play Bethany Saturday and lost that one by 14, 89-75. So... Oh, you a team that looks to play a little faster pace than Wesley and does. So look to get a few more possessions, look to get a few more shots off. Their top scorer is by far the leading scorer in tonight's game. It's Titus Rice, who shoots about 50% from the field, 38% from three-point range, so good overall scorer. Also, we're averaging six rebounds per game and has nine steals for the season. So he's a good all-around player. You'll hear a lot of him tonight. And then Logan Bullinger, much the same way, averaging 17 points per game, shooting a little worse, 45% from the field and just 7 of 26 from three-point range. He is a solid three-point shooter. And you can you can see his shooting stroke at the free throw line where he's hitting 88%. He's 30 of 34 this year. Just been a sluggish start to his season for him from beyond the perimeter. So hopefully he can get that going tonight. But he, like Rice, is able to get involved on the boards as well, averaging over five rebounds a game to go with the 17 points. He also leads the team in block shots with 11. So he'll be one to listen for tonight, as will Hollis Mitchell, averaging 12.1 points per game. Leads the team in assists with 32. Leads the team far and away. In fact, leads everybody involved in this game far and away. He's got 19 steals in seven games. So just shy of three steals a game, that can be huge in creating transition opportunities. And then he knows where to go with the ball. He can score it with the 12 points per game that we talked about. But then also, as I said, leading the team in assists. So a heads-up player and a good man to have running the offense if you're OU. Now, as far as rebounding goes, it's a, it's a little skewed because they do have a player averaging nine rebounds per game, but it's Cameron Lindsay who's only played one game, and he played for 30 minutes. So... We'll have to see if we see him despite some injury issues tonight or not. I'm not seeing him on the court right now, so he may still be out. But he would definitely be a good asset to have if, if and when they can get him available. He scored nine, got nine rebounds in that one game that he did play. Devin Perez, another player to watch out for. He'll average about 16 points a game, seven or 16 minutes a game. Scores about seven points 
He'll grab a few rebounds. He gets the assists, gets the steals. He's a good overall, all-around player. And so it's time for the National Anthem, and we'll go ahead and take a break here from Salina. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM. Pam Miller of Ottawa recently hired Wise Guys Construction. We had a home that was nice quality, but it was very dated, and so we had them go in and do some extensive remodeling. The lines of communication during the project were always open. They did a good job of making a, a stressful situation much less. The results exceeded expectation. Oh, we're very pleased. Uh, they did a really beautiful quality job. I would recommend Wise Guys. Whether it's residential, commercial, or restoration construction you need, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa, 229-50. 651. From KCAC champions to winners in the first round of the NAIA National Tournament. Here's Courtney Jenkins with a shot, and it's in! The Ottawa Braves have just won, and they're advancing to the quarterfinals of the NAIA Tournament. The Ottawa University Lady Braves soccer team continues to make history. And the Ottawa Braves are going to advance for the first time in program history. KOFO will bring you OU Lady Braves soccer Tuesday, November 29th in the second round of the NAIA National Tournament. Good luck to the Lady Braves from KOFO. Mitchell, the point guard. Emeka Okoronkwo, who this will be his first start of the season, averaging just 12 minutes per game, but a uh, good rebounder and a, uh, and a talented shot blocker as well. So he's definitely a, a threat down low. Alex Hasty, who we didn't mention in the pregame show, but is getting his fourth start. He was all KCAC or the uh, KCAC all defensive team last year. So doesn't contribute a lot offensively, just about three points per game and about two assists. But is a good defender out there on the perimeter. Has uh, six steals in seven games this year. And, of course, the two leading scorers, Logan Bullinger and Titus Wright. Mecca Okoronkwo puts up numbers more like a big man, but he is 6'2", so he's a, he is a guard, but the size in the starting lineup will come mostly from Logan Bollinger, who's 6'6". Six six. But overall, the Ottawa men's basketball roster is not an especially tall one. But neither is Kansas Wesleyan. Their starting lineup will be Trent Edwards, who's a 6'2 senior. Ryan Hill, who's a 6'1 senior. Terrell Gandy, who's a 6'1 junior. Dominic Johnson, a 6'2 senior. And then Jacob Lund, a 6'7 senior. So each, each team really only has one player taller than about 6'1 or 6'2. So it's not going to be a game dominated by size. similar in terms of the types of shots they take and how, how often they get to the free throw line, how many threes they take. And the Braves with a little more in terms of raw numbers in those categories, but they've played an extra game. So when you factor in averages, it's two teams that look to play offense in a pretty similar fashion. We are getting ready for tip-off now. Logan Bollinger in the circle. 
to take the tip for OU. We're waiting on Wesleyan to put their starting lineup out on the court. Of course, it'll be the 6'7", Jacob Lunds out there to tip off with Bollinger for OU. And here's the tip, and Bollinger able to get it back to his point guard, Hollis Mitchell. So OU with the ball to start things off. Here's Hasty swinging it out to Bollinger. He'll get it in to... Gonna say he stepped on the baseline. That was Titus Rice. Here's Trent Edwards taking it down the court for Westland. The Federal point guard will get it to Ryan Hill. Now Dominic Johnson on the wing, dri driving through, kicks it out to Trent Edwards. He's going to get it to Terrell Gandy at the top of the key. There's some contact there, but apparently he shuffled his feet. So the call will be a travel, and it'll be a throw into the Braves. Hasty throws it in to Mitchell. Mitchell back over to Hasty. He's going to swing it to Okoronkwo. Here's Rice back over to Hasty. Mitchell's got it driving from the top of the key. He'll kick it out to Okoronkwo. He's working against his defender. Gets it to the hoop and gets it in. An aggressive take there by Okoronkwo, and he's got the first point. It's 2 nothing Braves. Now here's Dominic Johnson on the other side, getting into Lunds, working against Hollis, and now pass intercepted by Hasty, and he'll get it to Hollis Mitchell. Mitchell back to Hasty at the top of the key, and he'll get it back to Mitchell, set up the offense. He's going to use a screen. Now Hasty gets it over to Titus Wright. On the wing, he's going to drive, gets an open lane to the basket, lays it up and in off the glass. It's 4 nothing Braves. Trent Edwards to take it down for the Coyotes. Passes it off to Terrell Gandy. Now here's Ryan Hill working from the top of the key. Almost had it knocked away by Hasty. Dominic Johnson over to Ryan Hill working from the corner. Tough defense working against the double team. They'll get it into Lund. Almost a held ball. It's knocked away by Mitchell. Now here's Titus Wright. Can't quite get numbers on the fast break. They'll have to hold it up and get it back out to Mitchell. Now Bollinger gets it back to Aronquo. He wants to take it to the rim. He'll get it hard. And he's fouled. Going hard to the rim. Got a little too far under it. And it just went right into the bottom of the pin. But drew the foul. The foul called against Dominic Johnson. So two shots now for Aronquo, and he'll hit the first. Emeka Aronquo making the first, most of his first start of the season with three of the Braves' first five points to make it for the first six. As he's nothing but net on the second free throw. 6-0 Braves. Just under 18 minutes to go in the first half. There's Ryan Hill getting it back to Trent Edwards, trying to feed it into Lunds. It's going to be a foul called Bollinger. They're saying he pushed off using an arm bar against Lund to try and maintain his position down there, down low on the block. It'll be a throw in underneath the basket. New shot clock for Coyotes. Here's Terrell Gandy looking to drive. Kicks it out to Edwards. He's going to feed it into Lund. They definitely want to get the ball inside. Working against Bollinger. Draws the foul and one. That's two fouls on Bollinger already. And we're going to see... Looks like they'll send Jalen Thompson in to replace Bollinger. So Bollinger, the second highest scorer on the team, quickly to the bench with foul trouble, just two minutes into the game. As Wesleyan clearly made getting the ball to Lunds a priority very early on here. Jalen Thompson, the 6'6 sophomore to replace Bollinger. Here's here he goes up for a jump shot, and he's nailed. Got it. Nothing but net, and it's 8-3. to three. Trent Edwards handing it off to Dominic Johnson. 
Now they'll feed it into Lunds again. Good defense there by Thompson. But he scores anyway, and it's eight to five. Now here's Brown going up. He has it rejected by Lunds. Edwards kicks it out to Hill. Hill gets it into Lunds again. They keep going to the big man. The hook rolls off the rim. Hasty's got the rebound. And here's a nice move by Aronquo. Okoronkwo now with six points. As he takes it to the rim with ferocity. Ten to five. Now a nice drive here by Hill. Has it knocked away though as he tried to dish it off the lunge at the last second. Lunds has been the entire offensive game plan for Wesleyan so far. Nobody else has taken a shot. A couple of substitutions come on for Wesleyan. There. There's Dominic Johnson. His shot way off. Goes off the side of the backboard. Hasty has to pick up his dribble as Hill tried to go for the steal. And here's Titus Rice. Calling for Hasty. Hasty almost lost it. Able to save it before it goes over the half court line. This is Hollis Thompson. Paul's Mitchell, excuse me. At the top of the key. Going to his left. Now pulls up for three. Too hard. Rebound pulled down by Lund. Wesleyan's going to look to run. Quick hands, but Ottawa can't get the steal. Now Hill had an open look for three. Didn't take it. And here's Dominic Johnson. Back up to Trent Edwards at the top of the key. Marcus Ellis and Grant Sylvester, the new players in for Kansas Wesleyan. Now Johnson, nice reversal. He'll kick it out to Edwards, who knocks down the three. And that's the first three-pointer we've seen. It's 10 to 8 Ottawa, but now Hollis Mitchell takes it all the way, and he's fouled. Mitchell got the throw in and just took off down court. Was able to draw the foul going up for the layup. We're going to see more substitutions as Devin Perez is ready to come in for the Braves. And we've got two Coyotes ready to come in as well. No, one Coyote, it'll be Jeremiah Brooks also ready to come in for OU. Hasty comes off. And Okoronkwo will come off. Again, it's Perez and Jeremiah Brooks in to replace them. As Mitchell missed the first free throw, here's the second. Good, 11 to eight, oh, Ottawa, 15-22 on the clock here in the first half. Here's Dominic Johnson, here's a whistle away from the ball. They're gonna call an offensive foul on Grant Sylvester. Turnover number three for Wesleyan. Turnover is what doomed the Ottawa women's team in the first game. Here's Mitchell. Gets it to Perez. Shoots for three. Nails it. 14 to eight. Perez stopped and popped and drained the three at the top of the key. Now it's going to be a block call against Rice here on the other end on the floor, so no free throws. Three fouls called on each team so far, We're just over five minutes into the game. Here's Dominic Johnson going to the hoop, now kicks it out. This is Grant Sylvester, his shot is short. Taken by Thompson, now here's Mitchell, finds Rice going the other way. Rice has to back off. He got himself into a little more than he could handle. Now, loose ball, and last touch by Wesley, and it goes out of bounds. Jamin Fulton, the last one to touch it. Now Hollis Mitchell will come off the court and will be replaced by Jacob Niedig. Hollis Mitchell just 5'8", so a very different look at point guard than the 6'3", Jacob Niedig. Niedig trapped over along the sideline. He'll get it over to Perez. Perez uses the screen, gets it over to Rice. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Rice is going to have to put it up. He goes for three. Oh, in and out. Almost got it. Now that's going to be a loose ball foul against Needed. Right. 
Now Eric Stark is going to come in for Jalen Thompson as Bullinger remains on the bench with those two very quick fouls. Picks them both up in about two minutes. It's going to be Jamin Fulton taking it down for Wesley. Takes it out to Johnson. Johnson back to Fulton. They're looking to get it inside. Goes to the layup and up and in. A nice drive there by Marcus Ellis. Now Nidig's going to take it down for the break. Kick it over to Titus Rice at the top of the key. Looks to drive. Nice lay in. Oh, rolls right off the front of the rim. Looks good. As again, kick it out to Dominic Johnson for a wide open three, and it's nothing but net. And Wesley's within one. We're going to see Mike McKinney coming in for the Braves at the next break. And now a steal on the other end. Dominic Johnson looking to take it coast to coast. Loses track of the ball, and it's going to go out of bounds. Braves get the throw in. And we'll have Mike McKinney and Emeka Okoronkwo coming on. Devin Perez and Titus Rice getting a break. Braves up one, 14-13, 13-24 to go here in the first half in Salina. Leading Kansas Wesley and looking for their first KCAC victory of the season. Is Nidig over to Okoronkwo. Looks to drive again. This time maybe called for the charge, and he is. It looks like he was underneath the basket, though. They're going to call the charge. It looks like both feet well in the restricted area. And the referee's response to the coach was that, well, I don't think so. He didn't sound very confident. 14-13 Braves. About 13 minutes to go in the first half. Here's Wesley and big man Roll Neary, the six foot six center in the game. Now ball out to Fulton on the perimeter. He's looking for somewhere to go with it. Has to kick it over to Ryan Hill. Now that's going to be a charge on the big man. Neary trying to back down. It was Nidig who was trying to back down and just put his rear end into him with a little too much force. Nidig had position and it'll go the other way. Nidig gets it over the half court line. Braves still with the one point lead. Here's Okoronkwo, the fadeaway jumper. Good. Okoronkwo having a big night in his first start of the year. It's 16 13 Braves. It's under 12 and a half to go here in the first half. And the pull-up jumper hit on the other side by Marcus Ellis. There's Brooks over to Mike McKinney. McKinney's got some room. Now he's going to kick it out to Eric Stark. Goes for three. Misses badly. Pulled down by Wesleyan. Now going the other way is Marcus Ellis. He's got a man wide open in the corner. And he'll hit the three. That's Ryan Hill. The Braves won a 30-second timeout, and we'll take one, too. Wesleyan just took the lead, 18-16. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO. You know Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa as the premier residential and commercial construction company. But did you know they also provide full repair for fire and flood restoration? Here's Bill Crowley, owner of Wise Guys Construction. We offer full turnkey services from cleaning and drying to the repairs of your project. We're an insurance preferred contractor. When disaster strikes, experience matters. When it comes to your residential, commercial, or restoration needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa. 785-229-5651. Sports. Information and entertainment in East Central Kansas. KOFO K279 CS Ottawa, where keeping you informed comes first. We're back in Salina. Jeremiah Brooks to throw it in to Jacob Nidig, the point guard. We'll slowly take it over half court line. Works to his left side, gets it to Okoronkwo. We'll send it back to Nidig. We'll try and set up the offense, clear some space. Here's Okoronkwo again, sends it in. Here's Stark. Kicks it out to McKinney. Takes it back out to Stark. Nidig over to Okoronkwo. Looks to get it to the hoop. Passes. And there is a foul as Eric Stark tries to go up for it. A lot of body contact on those drives. The referee's letting them play down low. (laughs) 
Eric starts at the free throw line. Off target to the left on his first shot. 11.23 to go in the first half. Wesleyan up 18-16 here in Salina. Stark to shoot his second. Up and rolls in, 18-17. Fulton to take it down the court for Wesleyan. He'll pass it back off to Xavier Smith. He gets it over to Ryan Hill. Hill in the corner. And here's a drive by Ellis, and that's going to be a charge. Lowered his shoulder, ran right into Xavier Smith. Smith throws it into Nidig to take it down the court. We're about nine minutes into the game. Braves down one. There's Stark at the top of the key. Gets it over to McKinney. McKinney over to Okoronkwo. He'll use the screen to try to get it in. Kick it out to Stark. Stark loses track of the ball. Nidig tried to save it, but right into the hands of Lunds, the big man for Wesleyan. Now here's a drive by Jamin Fulton and one. They'll count the basket. And the foul called, I believe, against Stark. And that'll go against Jeremiah Brooks, his first. We'll see some substitutions as Hollis Mitchell comes back on. As does Hasty, as does Titus Rice for the Braves. Down three, and Fulton trying to make it four for Wesleyan. And it's in. 21-17 Wesleyan. Mitchell to take it up court. Does it at full speed. Cuts inside, then passes it out to Hasty. Now a shot from the corner for Mitchell bounces out, but rebounded by Rice, but he'll step on the line. Goes back the other way. Rice looks like he had pulled down the offensive rebound, but foot was on the baseline. Fulton to take it the other way for the Coyotes with a four-point lead. Passed out to Xavier Smith. Now he hands it off to Ryan Hill. Ryan Hill backing down, turnaround shot, no good. Okoronkwo on the board. He looks to take it himself, gets it all the way to the basket, lays it up off the glass and rims out. And that looks like a travel, but no, no call. Wesleyan with the wide open three for Hill, and it's good. He's two for two, and both of his shots have been wide open and looked very nice. He's not the one you want to leave open. Here's Stark. Looks like he might have traveled, too. Instead, he'll lose the ball and turn it over. Wesleyan rapidly going the other way, and there's a foul as Xavier Smith tries to go up for the lay-in. He won't get it, but he will get two free throws. Two shots for Smith. First one rims out. We'll see a couple new players. Bollinger will see his first time since the first two minutes where he had to come off after picking up two quick fouls. Dark will come off. And Devin Perez also into the game. His second free throw is good. And it's a seven-point lead for Wesley in 24-17. 9.35 remaining here in the first half. Throwing to Hollis Mitchell. Working against Fulton, he'll pass it off to Hasty. Gets it to Perez, and here's a drive by Rice, who dunks it home. 24-19, pulls to within five. Rice unimpeded along the baseline. Um, dunks that in without any resistance, and there's an offensive foul against Fulton, who just tried to fight his way through a screen by Devin Perez, lowered his shoulder, knocked him to the ground. Team foul number seven, since it's an offensive foul, Ottawa won't get any shots. They are down five, looking to narrow the gap a little more as Devin Perez gets it into Bollinger. Bollinger working against Lund, now will hand it off to Hollis Mitchell. Mitchell hits Perez, pulls up for three, 
nailed it. Nothing but net. 24-22. Two-point game. Bollinger being in there as a threat in the center of the offense really opens things up and helps with the spacing outside. They'll kick it out to the corner for three. Now Wesleyan answers with a three of their own. Here's Perez over to Bollinger, fakes the three. Now he'll drive. A lot of bumping going on there. No foul called. The board tipped out to Mitchell. And then and one on the three-pointer. He passed it off to Devin Perez, who hit his third three-pointer of the game and took not a lot of contact, but a little bump as he came down off the jump shot. That's enough to send him to the line with an opportunity to pull this to within one. Bollinger will come back off the court. Still working with two fouls. And Perez knocks down the free throw. It's a one-point game. Braves coaching staff not satisfied with the, how much contact the referees are letting go. They feel like it's not been consistent with the way their games have been officiated so far. And the referees definitely are letting a lot of contact go on drives and underneath. Wesleyan missed the shot. Now here's Titus Rice dribbling, driving, loses the ball. Wesleyan taking it the other way. They're going to look for three. Rice came from behind and just swatted it out of his hand. Braves going the other way. Here's Rice. Spin move goes up. The short shot rolls off the rim. Stays a one-point game. 7.40 to go in the first half. There's Edwards over to Xavier Smith for three. Beautiful shot this in. High arcing three with nothing but net. 30-26. Here's Rice off the dribble. Has it swatted by Lund. Braves going, going to foul as Wesleyan tries to take it back the other way. Hasty reaching in. Got a, a lot of the body with his hip. shots for Xavier Smith now. Smith hits his first free throw. Thirty-one twenty-six Wesleyan. Second one, nothing but net. It's a six point lead. Hollis Mitchell taking it down. Looking to set up the offense, get something going. Every time they've pulled close, Wesleyan's pulled out to another lead again. Devin Perez loses track of that pass, drops it on the line. It goes out of bounds. Wesleyan will come back the other way. Trent Edwards taking it down the court, crosses half court. Passes it off to the big man, Lund, who's way out on the perimeter, has to hand it off. Here's Xavier Smith for another three. Air ball. Here's Hollis Mitchell looking to take it coast to coast. Now he'll try and kick it out at the last second. Has it knocked away. Perez gets it. Knocks down another three. Devin Perez, 4 of 4 from outside. The three-point game again. 32-29. Stolen by Hollis Mitchell. Now there's a fight for it. They're going to call a foul against Mitchell as he tries to recover the ball. No, they're going to call. Okay, they pointed to Mitchell, but... They're going to call it on Xavier Smith. Mitchell knocks the ball away, and then the two are grappling for it. It definitely looks like Smith dove on Mitchell to try and get the ball. We're going to have Mike McKinney substituting in. The referees talk a little bit about the previous call. Might be discussing whether or not OU had possession. If not, they wouldn't be shooting free throws here. So it's a matter of whether Hollis Mitchell had the ball in his possession when he was fouled. If not, it's a loose ball foul. They would not be shooting one and one. No, and they'll, they'll say he did not have possession, so it'll be a throw in to the Braves. Hey, 
So Hasty will throw it in here. The coaching staff getting an explanation of why they're not shooting free throws. Hasty throws it into Mitchell. He'll set up the offense. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Here's McKinney over to Titus Rice. Fakes the shot, gets it over to Hasty. Now kicks it out to Mitchell. Mitchell, a little move, contact, no call. Here's Hasty underneath the basket. Up, doesn't get it. Wesleyan comes back the other way. Here's Edwards. Out on the right wing. A little spin move, starts to free up some room. Now it's Marcus Ellis, almost got it stolen. Now Ellis with, gets it to Xavier Smith on the backdoor cut, who lays it in. Now Hollis Mitchell over to Hasty. Hasty to Rice out on the wing. Rice has a lot of room, passes it off to Hasty, who's going to lay it up and in for an easy basket. 34 31, it's a three point game. Under six minutes to go. First half. 13 points for Devin Perez, 8 for Okoronkwo. Neither of them on the court right now. There's a shot by the big man, Lund, for Wesleyan. It's off. Braves take it back the other way. Here's Mitchell out to Thompson, who gets it to Rice. On the wing, he'll get it back to McKinney at the top of the key. Almost lost track of it, gets it out to Hasty. He'll find Mitchell again. And he's bumped. That's going to be foul number 10 on Wesleyan. Two shots, even though the foul was on the floor. As Mitchell just looking to drive, just got a bump hip to hip. Mitchell hits the first free throw. Thirty-four, thirty-two. now. Mitchell will try and pull this to within one with his second free throw. Sinks it. 34-33. And we'll see Knighting coming back in for Hollis Mitchell. Jamon Fulton bringing it down for Wesleyan, who teams up one. He'll get it over to Ryan Hill. Hill looking to get it inside to Lund. Lund ducks the defense, puts it up, misses the shot, but he is fouled. And I'm sorry, that's their other big man. That's Raul Neri. They're very similar high, very similar shape, him and Lund. That is Raul Neri. Try and get his first point of the game. Awkward shooting motion. He misses the free throw. Stark is going to come on for Jalen Thompson now. 5.05 remaining here in the first half. The Braves down just one. Neri at the line for his second shot. That one is also off. Stark goes up for the rebound. Gets it. The Braves will take it the other way. Basket would get them the lead. Here's Stark over to Titus Rice. Rice fakes the three and now looks to drive. Doesn't have any room. Kicks it out to Hasty. Hasty will find Rice. Rice jab step. Now step back two. Had a foot on the line, but it gets the Braves the lead. 35-34. Not as deep a two as you can take, but his foot was on the line. One point game, four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Braves up for the first time since very early on. There's a three, missed by Wesleyan. Rice pulls down the rebound. Here's Nadig. Gets over to Stark at the top of the key. Swings it to McKinney. McKinney uses a green, steps back, now kicks it over to Hasty, out to Rice. Rice pulls up for three, missed off the rim. Wesleyan taking it back the other way. Here's Ryan Hill looking to drive. He'll have to back it back out. Sends it over to Jamon Fulton. Now Marcus Ellis in the corner working against Titus Rice. Drives. He's fouled. He's going to call the foul against Rice. That'll be number two against him. So him, Okorongo, and Bollinger all with two fouls as we're just under four minutes to go here in the first half. Auto up 35-34, and it's Marcus Ellis. Wasn't ready for that pass from the referee. 
They'll reset things as he's at the free throw line for two. Team foul number 10 on Ottawa. Each team has 10. First free throw, good. Ties the game up as Devin Perez is going to come in for Titus Wright. Free throw number two for Ellis, trying to regain the lead for Wesleyan. And they do. AC throws it in to Nadig. Nadig setting things up, gets it over to Hasty, back to Devin Perez. And here's Mike McKinney working out on the left wing, looks to drive, pulls up, the jumper is good. Braves regain the lead, 37-36. Oh, nice passing. There's Raul Neri laying it in. The two quick passes got the ball right to the basket. No one was there to challenge Neri. Here's Nadek to Hasty, and now Starks is wide open under the basket. He missed it. That would have been goaltending had it not gone in, as Nadek was right there to put it back in. Thirty-nine, thirty-eight, Ottawa. Throw Gandy. Over to Marcus Ellis. Ellis looks to drive, gets to the basket, lays it up off the rim. It's like a little contact, referees let it go. There's Mike McKinney. Bots up for three, way off to the left. Hasty goes up and I believe over the back to try and tip it out. And it is on Hasty. No, that'll go against Nidig. Hollis Mitchell will come back in for Neidig, who pulled, picks up his second foul. So that's two fouls on Neidig, Okorongwo, Bollinger, and Rice. For Wesleyan, two fouls on Fulton, Gandy, Ellis, and Johnson. So, or excuse me, that's Edwards, Johnson, and Sylvester. Looking at the wrong column there. It's two assists the piece for the four I named earlier. It's still three with two fouls apiece for Wesleyan and four with two fouls apiece for the Braves. As he hits both free throws. It's a one-point Coyote lead. Here comes Hollis Mitchell, weaving in and out. Gets it over to McKinney. Another pull-up jumper. Good again. Creates some space, pulls up, and knocks it down. That's two straight possession. Braves up by one. Dish out for an open three in the corner. Miss over the back by Lund, but no call. A lot of contact there as he tried to tip that offensive rebound out. Here's McKinney, the pass picked off. Now here's Fulton driving to the basket, and that's going to be a block. Stark wanted the charge, tried to plant himself in front of Fulton as he drove, but didn't get set, and it'll be a defensive foul. So two shots for Fulton as the two teams have been exchanging one-point leads here for the past couple of minutes. Fulton for free throw. Rattles in. Ties it up at 41. Xavier Smith is ready to come in for the shooter. Free throw is good. This comes in for Wesleyan, who takes a 42-41 lead. And the seesaw goes back the other way. Hasty throws it into Mitchell. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the first half. It's been a close game throughout. Oh, nice backdoor cut by McKinney, who goes up for the layup. The assist goes to Hasty on that. Good vision, seeing him make that cut. Nobody there along the baseline. 43-42, Braves, and there's a foul before the shot as Ryan Hill was driving, went up for the layup, but they'll say he was pushed first. That foul called on Alex Hankey, who will become the fifth Brave to pick up his second foul of the first half. And Ryan Hill, who's three of four at the line so far, will shoot another pair. Swish goes the first one, and the game's tied up again. So 
Royals second free throw is good. 44-43 Wesleyan. Cross court pass to McKinney. McKinney almost loses control, has to regain composure and then pass it off to Ellis. Now Ellis over back to McKinney. McKinney looking for his shot. Now to step in front of that pass. Now Wesleyan looking to drive into Lund, Lund to shot is off. Offensive rebound though by Johnson and he's fouled as he goes up for the putback. So Wesleyan's up by one and this time they'll go to the free throw line with a chance to make it a three point lead instead of trying to make it a one point lead. We've seen a lot of clock stoppages here down the stretch in the first half as both teams hit the foul limit very quickly. That free throw is off by Johnson. We will see Will Owens come on for the first time today for the Braves as Mike McKinney goes to the bench. Xavier Johnson, second free throw, rims out. So no harm done by the foul there. Hasty gets the rebound. There's Mitchell over to Perez. So trying to make it five for five from outside. He's short on that one. Here's Marcus Ellis. Driving to the right, kicks it back out to Xavier Johnson. Hands it off to Terrell Gandy. Gandy almost loses control. Now Ellis feeds it into Lund. Lund's against Stark. The spin move. Gets it up and in. Now it's a three-point lead. And Owens almost loses track of it there. Now gets it to Hasty. Back over to Devin Perez. Is Owens. Starks at the top of the key. Now here's Devin Perez back to Starks. The floater. They're going to call a block as it was Brian Hill trying to slide in underneath him as he rose up for that floater. You can't slide into set position after the player leaves his feet and still draw a charge. So they'll say he did not get set quickly enough. And Starks will hit the first free throw. 46-44, second free throw would make it a one-point game. 43 seconds to go in the first half. Dark hits it. 46-45, Wesleyan lead. It'll be Marcus Ellis taking it down for Wesleyan. To the cross half court. Now Hollis Mitchell in his pocket, chasing him around, not letting anything come easy. Great defense by Mitchell. Ellis can't get anywhere on him. Has to eventually pass it off. Now rising up for three is Gandy. He misses. And looks like Ryan Hill stepped on the line as he tried to get the offensive board. 16 seconds to go. Braves down one. If they can hit, save the ball for one last shot and hit it, they would go into halftime with the lead. Hollis Mitchell with the ball. Working out to that left side. Off balance jumper misses. Wesleyan with the board. Six seconds. There's going to be a foul called again. Dark. So Stark will be the sixth Brave to pick up his second foul. But they've managed to avoid getting anyone into serious foul trouble and picking up that third. But Ryan Hill now moves to the line to try and make it a three-point lead going into halftime, whereas Ottawa could have had a chance to try and take the lead going into the break, but tried to run off a shot a little too quickly. Both free throws are good, 48-45. Five seconds. Hollis Mitchell off to Owens. High arcing shot, misses. And we'll go into halftime with the score of Kansas Wesleyan 48, Ottawa Braves 45. It's been a high scoring back and forth affair with a lot of fouls and a lot of free throws so far. We'll go ahead and take a break and be back with some stats and a recap of the first half. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO. 
Kramer Pharmacy, downtown Ottawa, hopes you're enjoying this KOFO Sports broadcast and wishes all the area teams good luck this season. Call Kramer Pharmacy today and ask about their convenient MedSync program that allows you to have all your prescriptions filled at the same time each month. Call 242-2055. People's Bank in Ottawa is proud to support our area sports teams. From People's Bank Field at Ottawa University to our Bucks for Buckets promotion and more, we believe our local sports programs are an investment in our future. Best of luck to all the teams from all of us at People's Bank. Member FDIC. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. At Messenger's Home Furnishings in South Ottawa, we've always been serious about providing the best value on furniture and bedding in East Central Kansas. Come visit Kansas's newest America's Mattress Gallery inside Messenger's Home Furnishings, just west of Sirloin Stockade in South Ottawa. When quality matters, choose the best. Choose Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling. Call today and make sure your heating and cooling system is ready for the season at 785-242-9273. Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, maintaining your comfort for over 30 years. This is Ryan Disbro, your State Farm Insurance Agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1660. To protect your family and plan for your financial future, get to know your Modern Woodman agent. Hello, I'm Dale Pearson, your Modern Woodman agent in Ottawa, Kansas. Call me today at 242-6566. Modern Woodman of America, touching lives, securing futures. And welcome back to Salina, where we are at halftime. A hard-fought battle between Ottawa and Kansas Wesley, and the Braves down three right now, 48-45. With a, a lot of fouling and a lot of free throws down the stretch, total of 31 free throws shot in the first half alone, 20 of them by Kansas Wesley, and the Ottawa coaching staff not particularly fond of the way that uh, a lot of those, those fouls were called. And, situations in which they were and weren't. Wesleyan called for 11 fouls in the first half. The Braves for 15. They have five players, or excuse me, six players with two fouls apiece. It's Logan Bollinger who picked up his two in the first couple of minutes. And Bollinger really, we didn't hardly saw any of him the rest of the way. But then Emeka Okoronkwo, who started off with eight of the team's first 16 points. Uh, was pulled for foul trouble. Alex Hasty picked up two. Titus Rice, of course, an important player, the team's leading scorer, or on the year, the leading scorer, not today, has two. Then Jacob Nadig and Eric Stark picked up his second right there at the very end. The hero offensively of the first half was Devin Perez. Played only nine minutes, but put in 13 points going four of five from three-point range, including hitting his first four, and then getting fouled on that fourth one, making it a four-point play. So that's how he racked up his 13. Then Mitchell Hollis, no points, but, or excuse me, only three points, no made shots from the floor, three made free throws, but five assists and a steal. So he's been vital as well. And then Alex Hasty playing a lot of important minutes not minutes to show up in the stat sheet necessarily. He does have three rebounds, a steal, and an assist, and then two points. But he really helps out by making hustle plays, blocking to the ball. So if the Braves hadn't gotten into uh, foul trouble with some important players early on, this one might look a little different. But as it is, they're still very much in the game, just down 48-45. They've, the turnover numbers have been fairly equal as, uh, as opposed to what we saw in the women's game where turnovers really kind of sunk the Lady Braves. But uh, Ottawa turned it over nine times to Wesley in 10. We'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll be back with uh, more of the halftime show here from Salina. You're listening to OU Braves Basketball here on KOFO Sports. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. 
with opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations. We all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. The Ottawa Shopper has a new look with new features. Never miss your favorite TV show with The TV Guides. Find area church times and the popular Kids Talk About God column on the church pages. And get useful employment tips from our weekly Q&A advice column. Call 242-4700 to get your Franklin County address added to our subscription list for free or pick up the Ottawa Shopper at multiple racks around town. That's 242-4700. Smart Ottawa Shoppers know Costantino's Price Chopper has the best rewards program in town. Only Price Chopper lets you earn points on all your purchases. Visit MyPriceChopper.com and start saving on food or fuel today. Shop Costantino's, your local family-owned grocer since 1948. Imagine what you could do if you didn't have knee pain. The freedom and ability you once had would improve your quality of life. Not all knee pain requires surgery. Call Franklin County Chiropractic today at 242-9393 and schedule your Believe It or Not special $17 knee exam. Need to know if your child's game or practice has been canceled due to weather? Sign up now for Ottawa Recreation Commission's text alerts. Go to orcottawaks.org to sign up or for more information. Ransom Memorial Hospital Cancer Care, your cancer-fighting team, is open and accepting patients. For a personalized care experience, call 785 229-8203 229-8203 online at ransom.org or at 1301 South Main Street, Ottawa. RMH Cancer Care. Close to home, close to your heart. And we're back in Salina with the halftime show for the basketball game between Kansas Wesleyan and the Ottawa Braves. And the Braves looking at the stat sheet, probably a little lucky to be as close in this game as they are, or if not lucky, then uh, relying on willful performances by some of the guys that they're not used to relying on. The two leading scorers have combined for four points, or actually six points. Titus Titus Rice has six, but Logan Bollinger has only attempted one shot and only played four minutes as he picked up two fouls in just over two minutes right at the beginning of the game and only saw one two-minute shift later on. And then Titus Rice sat as soon as he picked up his second foul. He's got six points on eight shots. So when your two leading scorers combine for six in the first half and you're down by only three on the road, you have to consider that a bit of a win. If you look at the assist numbers, Paulus Mitchell has five, but only one apiece for Hasty and Rice, and that's it. Seven assists on 16 made baskets for the Braves, not the greatest ratio. Wesleyan doing a better job in terms of ball movement with nine assists on 14 made shots. Wesleyan also with six steals to Ottawa's three, but they haven't taken care of the ball especially well. A lot of puts on foot. Foots is not a word. Feet is. A lot of feet on the line that have resulted in turnovers for the Coyotes, or the Coyotes as they say in central Kansas, and I guess other areas of Kansas. I'm, where I'm from, it's Coyote. Oh, hard habit to break. But 10 turnovers for Wesleyan and 9 turnovers for the Braves. But again, really the, the hero for the Braves offensively, really keeping them in this, has been Devin Perez. 13 points off four three-pointers. Four of five shooting from outside. Fouled on one and made the free throw to make it a rare four-point play. And a lot of these are plays where he just has to catch, turn, and shoot. He's not even necessarily shooting in rhythm. It's more of a shot while he's turning. But he's still able to at least get his upper body squared up and hit these three-pointers. And that's really gone a long way toward keeping them in the game as Rice and Bollinger have been somewhat limited. We'll go ahead and take another break. Be back with more of the halftime show from Salina. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. 
With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. Technology, mobile banking, I totally heart my bank. Kansas State Bank, a better way to bank with community people you know. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. At State Farm, our goal is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This is State Farm Agent Keith King in Ottawa. Let me help you protect what's most important to you. Give my office a call at 785-242-9435 or stop by at 111 South Main Street in Ottawa. Eric Price and his staff at the Lamb Roberts Funeral Homes are proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast and honored to help so many families in the community with compassionate care when it's needed most. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Ottawa, Baldwin City, and Overbrook. Hi, I'm Dalton Evans. I'm 10 years old and happy to report that I've never had a cavity. Thanks to brushing twice a day and two cleanings a year at Dr. Hale Family Dentistry. Schedule your family's appointment today by calling 242-1800. What does Sutton's Jewelry and Santa have in common? Hi, this is Amy Riddle, Sutton's Jewelry Assistant Manager. Santa and Sutton's know how to put a sparkle in your Christmas gift giving, like diamond earrings starting at $69 or as sparkly as $3,000. We offer licensed team jewelry for the Royals, KU, and K-State. And for those of you wishing to surprise mom with a Christmas Day mother's ring, our deadline to order is December 9th. So order now and take advantage of our convenient layaway. Sutton's Jewelry, 207 South Main, Ottawa. And welcome back to Salina as the team's have- Come back out onto the court here to warm up for the second half. And going back to what I was saying about the contribution of Devin Perez off the bench, hasn't just been Perez. In general, the Ottawa bench is actually outscoring their starters 26 to 19. So the bench really has been invaluable as the starters and, and bench players as well have found themselves in a lot of foul trouble early on here. The referees have called a tight game in some ways, but then in terms of under the basket and on the drive, it's, they've a lot of, let a little more contact go. A lot more of the touch fouls is what we've seen called. And that's where a lot of those free throws came from down the line, whereas where the uh, Coyotes shot 20 free throws again in that first half. And, the Braves shot 11 of their own. But uh, again, the bench coming in big for both teams as Wesleyan's bench has 22 points to the starters, 26. So the uh, the guys coming in out of, out of the warm-ups have been just as important as the starters for both sides in this one so far. We'll take one more break, and then we'll be back with his, the beginning of the second half. Here in Salina, again, it's halftime. Wesleyan up 48-45. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. This is Lou Baker at CarStar Ottawa. Our technicians are highly trained, iCar certified repair experts. We provide continued education for our employees and the latest equipment to ensure the highest quality repairs. We work hard at staying your number one collision repair shop. 1-800-CARSTAR. Relax, we'll take it from here. Community journalism is thriving at the Ottawa Herald. Three days a week in print and every day online, the Herald's award-winning staff covers the news that matters to you. Breaking news, sports, events, and so much more, just as the Herald has done for more than 140 years. Call 242-4700 to subscribe today, or find us online at www.ottawaherald.com, on Facebook, or download our app. When quality matters, choose the best. Choose Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling. Call today and make sure your heating and cooling system is ready for the season at 785-242-9273. Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, maintaining your comfort for over 30 years. Since 1944, families of Franklin County have called Dingle & Son Mortuary and Crematory in their time of
of need. Why? Because of the peace of mind received knowing that Dingle and Son will take charge and exceed expectations. Visit DingleMortuary.com. People's Bank in Ottawa is proud to support our area sports teams. From People's Bank Field at Ottawa University to our Bucks for Buckets promotion and more, we believe our local sports programs are an investment in our future. Best of luck to all the teams from all of us at People's Bank. Member FDIC. And welcome back to Salina. We're just about ready to get underway in the second half in the starting lineup. Back out there for OU for the first time since about the 18-minute mark in the first half. Okawanku, Hastings, Bollinger, Rice, and Mitchell. And Wesleyan will throw it in to start things off. Up 3, 48-45. Rice playing defense out on the perimeter. Here's a drive on the baseline. Had to kick it back out. Now in a wide open three for Trent Edwards. Rolls off the rim. Bullinger's got the board. Kicks it out to Hollis Mitchell. Mitchell takes it down the court. We'll slow it up. Up to the top of the key. Okwanku gets some space. Gets it to the hole. And now he's fouled as he goes up for the lay-in. Won't get the two. The easy way, but it'll get two shots. Foul called on Terrell Gandy. Okoronkwo with eight points in the first half. He'll hit the free throw. Try and pull it within one with a second. And it rolls in. 48-47. Braves to within one. Okoronkwo with ten. He'll defend Trent Edwards, who takes it down. Now is Ryan Hill. Feeds it into the big man, Lunds, who goes up with the hook shot. They're going to call another foul. Every time Lunds Lunds touches the ball, it seems we get a foul called. One called on Hasty. That's three on Hasty. Lund's first free throw rolls in. Lund's had seven first half points. Three of six in the field and then one of one from the line. Now he's three of three from the line. He's got nine points and it's a three point lead again. Hollis Mitchell takes it down for the Braves. Working on the left side. Bollinger's pass cut off so we'll get it to Rice over to Okoporonquo. They'll find Hasty. Hasty out to Bollinger. Wide open two. Just short, Bocoronquo pulls down the offensive board. Here's Titus Wright. Creates some space, goes up for three. Rips out. Would have tied it up. 50-47 still. Wesleyan takes the ball down. Here's Edwards. Kicks it out to Johnson. Johnson pass deflected by Bollinger, and Rice ends up with the steal. Rice has to pull up. Loses the handle and can't go full speed. Bollinger for three. Too long, too long and... Rebound to Wesleyan. Now Edwards tries to push it. Now kick it back out. Here's Hill. And he's able to lay it in. Ryan Hill makes it a five-point game. Titus Rice with the ball out on the right wing. Over to Bullinger at the top of the key. Here's Hollis Mitchell cutting it into the lane. Pulls up at the elbow. The jumper didn't quite roll in. Rebound to Lund. Wesleyan with a five-point lead. Hill looking to push it. Spin move. Layup well short. Bollinger with the rebound. Bollinger will take it down the court himself. Now gets it out to Rice. Rice gets it in, goes up, gets called for a charge. Foul number three on Titus Rice. So two starters, Hasty and Rice, playing with three fouls. And they're going to bring Hasty. No, they're going to bring Rice out. And Jeremiah Brooks comes on for the Braves. Just Trent Edwards all alone doesn't want to take the three. He'll give it to Hill. So calls for a pick from Lund. The pick and roll can't get it into Lund. Had the pass cut off. Now here's Johnson driving. And gets it in. Seven-point lead for Wesleyan. I believe that's the biggest of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Kazoka Ronquo passes over to Mitchell. 
This will get it to Bollinger. Ronquo looking to drive, now kicks it out. Edwards got a hand on it, now fast break. He lays it up and misses Bollinger with the board. Back out to Mitchell. Mitchell looking to take it back the other way. Now blocked, but a foul called. That was Jeremiah Brooks going up for it, and I believe it was... It was Trent Edwards who will get called for the foul. That's number three on him. So both teams have at least one starter in foul trouble. And Edwards looks like he will come out in favor of Jamon Fulton, who only has one foul. And the first free throw is good for Jeremiah Brooks. That breaks up the run by Wesleyan. They've scored five straight prior to that. 54-48, second free throw rolls in. 54-49, the five-point game. Fulton will take it down for Wesleyan. At the top of the key, defended by Hasty, and with the foul trouble, the Braves have gone to a zone look. Now, three-pointer for Wesleyan, rolls out. Lunds goes over the back, doesn't get called. They're going to call a jump ball as he and... He and Brooks, who is holding his shoulder, both went up for it. Brooks is going to come out immediately. He's holding that right shoulder. He and Lunds were battling for the rebound. Eric Stark comes in. He's going to pass it into Hollis Mitchell. Mitchell driving left. Now kick it out to Hasty over to Bullinger. Entry pass is too high for Stark. Goes out of bounds. Ball goes to Wesley. 54-49, Wesley and up five, 16 and a half minutes to go in the game. Bolton dribbling down for the Coyotes. Over to Terrell Gandy, over to Lunds. Now it ends up back in Bolton's hands at the top of the key. Here's Johnson from distance, misses. Unable to track down the rebound is Stark. Offensive board kicked out for a too long two. Johnson gets another offensive rebound. So another second chance. If that makes it a third chance for Wesleyan. Here's Johnson. Thought about it from way outside, then tries to drive, but the zone collapses on him. Now Fulton over the hill. Hill looks for room. Can't find any. Fulton from several feet behind the line. Knocks it down. Braves down eight. That's the Coyote's biggest lead of the game. Mitchell finds Bollinger. Nice reverse layup to cut it to back to six. Johnson driving. Bollinger got a hand on that, knocked it out of bounds. Wesleyan will throw it in underneath their own basket. And we'll see Jalen Thompson come in for Bollinger. Now we'll see Devin Perez coming in for Hasty. So nobody out there currently has three fouls anymore for the Braves. Here's a three for Ellis. Short, rebounded by Oronquo. Or or Excuse me, Okoronquo. Now he'll try and take it coast to coast, gets a hard bump, makes the layup. The coaches can't believe there's no and one called on that. Referee motions that they were vertical, but he was fouled hard, body to body, as he went up for that layup. Four point lead now for Wesleyan. Here's Ellis working against that Ottawa zone. Kicks over to Johnson, back out to Ellis, now over to Fulton. Ellis relays it back over to Johnson. He's going to pull up for a contested long two-point shot. No, Okoronkwo comes down with it. Here's Hollis Mitchell. Nice move. And goes up and misses the layup, but there's a block. Called against the defense, Kansas Wesley, and that'll be Marcus Ellis called for the foul. That's number two on him. Hollis Mitchell goes to the line. He could pull this back to within a one-possession game. 
Braves down four. They've been down by as much as eight and led by as much as six, but that was at the very beginning of the game. Mitchell's first free throw rolls in. 57-54. Hill and Lund come off for Westland as Sylvester and Sylvester and Johnson come on. Or Smith, excuse me. Ellis trying to find a passing lane against the zone. Now here's Fulton back out to Ellis on the perimeter. Fulton at the top of the key. Another three from distance. That one's long, but rebounded by Johnson. Poked out by Mitchell. And that last touch by, by Johnson went off his leg. Mitchell poked it out and it went off Johnson's leg. So the Ottawa will have the ball after we break. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. We are back in Salina at 57-55. Wesleyan leads the OU Braves. Okoronkwo continues to have a fantastic day in his first start of the season. He had eight points pretty quickly in the first half, but had to be pulled for foul trouble. But now he's already up to 12 points, four rebounds for the day. And then Devin Perez hasn't scored yet here in the second half, but still the leading the leading both teams in scoring with 13 entirely off of three pointers and one free throw. Titus Rice, the team's leading scorer, in fact the, the game's leading scorer, or the high scorer for both teams involved here, has shot just three of nine, has six points, and is currently sitting with foul trouble with three fouls. Jalen Thompson comes into the game for the Braves with Hollis Mitchell. Devin Perez is back in as well. There's Okoronkwo. He'll go to the drive and lays it in again. He can seemingly just get to the basket at will. He's got 14 now, a game high. Braves stay in the zone. It's a 2-3. Wide open Fulton passes up the shot. But here's Johnson. He's wide open as well. Way off to the right. Stark pulls down the rebound. He'll kick it out to Mitchell. Mitchell takes it down with Pace. Here's Okoronkwo. Tie game. Stark for three. Off. Rebounded by Wesleyan. Bolton over to Johnson on the left side. Now this is stolen by Stark, and he'll get it to Mitchell to run the offense. Bollinger and Natick prepared to come in for the Braves at the next break. There's Okoronkwo over to Stark. Back to Okoronkwo. Looks to drive. Nothing there. Gets it into Jalen Thompson, who's fouled as he goes up. Foul called against Fulton. That'll be number two on him. Now Thompson has a shot at putting the Braves up by two, a lead they haven't seen since early on in the first half. Or no, they'll say that was prior to the shot, so they won't get free throws. Fourth team foul on Wesleyan. Perez passes into Bollinger, who hits the jumper, and the Braves are up by two. 12.45 to go. Here's Ellis. Over to Trent Edwards. Ellis back at the top of the key, back to Edwards. They're still trying to figure out this zone. They're having some trouble scoring against it. That three-pointer is in and out. Rebounded by Stark. And Nadick gets it over to Perez, fakes the shot, now kicks it out to Bollinger. Bollinger gets into the lane, thought about a fadeaway, and now passes it back to Okoronkwo. Ameka Okoronkwo with the ball 
way out on the corner here near the baseline. Now he'll look to drive. No room. Backed off. Takes the three. Hits it. The Braves go up by five. 62-57. Just under 12 to go. Edwards takes it down for Westland. There's Ellis back to Edwards. They swing it back and forth around the perimeter, unable to get the ball inside against this zone so far. Ellis working against Nadick. Over to Edwards. Edwards back out to Ellis. He's only three seconds left on the shot clock. Has to take a fadeaway jumper. Misses, but it's going to be rebounded by Wesleyan. Edwards gets it back out to Ellis. Ellis to Johnson. Finds Edwards open for three. Passes it up. Now here's Dominic Johnson. Takes it to the basket and lays it in. And it's a three-point game. That'll be a kicked ball by Wesleyan. It'll be a throw in for the Braves as Lund comes back in for Wesleyan. Seems to make a huge difference for them. Okoronko is going to come off for McKinney. McKinney's got six points on three or four shooting. McKinney gets the throw in. Now reverses and will back up. Gets over to Bullinger. To Natick. Natick finds Bullinger. Pulls up for another jumper. This one's off target. Rebounded by Wesleyan. Gandy got the board. Gets it over to Edwards. Edwards looking to run. And now Johnson, a wide open three, misses. Stark pulls down the board. Here comes Mitchell. Mitchell, the floater, misses off target. Lund gets the board, and Mitchell will be called for the foul, trying to slap it out of his hand. 10.29 to go. The Braves up 62-59. Hastie's going to come back into the game, and he'll replace Stark. Edwards takes it down, will pass it over half court. Here's Ellis. Ellis over to Edwards. Edwards looking to pass. Gandy gets it to Lunds over to wide open Edwards who shoots for three and it rolls out. Looks like it might roll in for a moment. Now Hasty gets the board, gets it over to Devin Perez. Perez leaves his feet to pass. Bollinger ends up with it at the top of the key. Now here's McKinney. McKinney kicks it over to Natick. Natick can't get it into Bollinger. They're going to look to again. Bollinger being very well defended down there. AC with the ball getting back over to Natick at the top of the key. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Pass it off to Bollinger. The reverse layup is good. Nice backdoor cut. The drive drove the defense out. Bollinger got that step of separation. It was enough to free up enough space to drive and get the reverse lay-in. So 64-59, and now I believe Hasty's going to get called for the foul on... No, it's going to be Natick. As they... Natick was... And Hasty was in there, too. They were fighting with Lund for possession of the ball. Here's Edwards. Over to Ellis, back to Edwards. Now, Edwards looking to drive, kicks it out again. Having a really tough time finding pass to the basket against this zone. Here's Ellis kicking it back out to Gandy for three, hits it. That pulls Wesley to within two, under nine minutes left. Devin Perez out on the perimeter. Gets to Bullinger, swings it to McKinney. McKinney the drive, now kicks out to Hastings, back to Bullinger for three, off the back of the net, of the rim. Now Wesleyan pushing it before Ottawa can get set up in their zone, they're going to take an off-balance jumper and it falls in. Brian Hill couldn't have selected a much uglier shot on a fast break, but it falls. Ties the game up at 64 and Titus Rice is going to come in at the next break, as will Hollis Mitchell. Here's a three by Perez, way off target. Tracked down by Natick, though. Referee blows the whistle, stops play. Uh, 
okay. It looks like they reset the shot clock, but that ball never hit the rim. So that'll reset the shot clock to 14 seconds as Mitchell and Rice sub in for Perez and Nadek. 8.16 remaining. This is a tie game at 64. Hastiel pass into Mitchell. Mitchell looks to drive. Now kicks it out to Bollinger for three. Hits it. Braves go back up three. Bollinger being in the lineup makes a big difference. And that's a travel. Edwards tried to go left. The pass lane was cut off. Then his decision to go right happened a little too late. He shuffled his feet. And the Braves will get the ball back. 8.02 to go. Up three. It's been a close game the entire way. Biggest lead of the game has been Wesleyan by eight. Biggest lead for Ottawa was by six when they were up six nothing at the very beginning. Mitchell over to Bollinger. Bollinger gets a wide open jump shot. He's short though. Rebound pulled down by Gandy and Wesleyan looks to go the other way. Here's Fulton. Fulton working against Mitchell, hands it off to Gandy. Gandy over to Johnson, guarded by Hasty. He'll send it back over to Johnson and swings it to Fulton. Lund calling for the ball, he gets it. He's gonna work against Bullinger, fights, puts the ball up. A lot of contact, but no call. And now the jump shot on the offensive rebound missed. Braves taking it back the other way. Now Mitchell, Fulton, Bollinger battling for the ball. And it's going to be a jump ball. Called out of the scrum on the floor. Coach is arguing for the possession arrow, but be a throw in for Wesleyan. Now Fulton takes it past half court. Good over to Hill. So back to Fulton. Fulton drives and he's going to be fouled by Mitchell out on the perimeter. It's going to be foul number one on Hollis Mitchell and McKinney will he subbed out. Okoronkwo comes back in. Okoronkwo still with a game high, 17 points. Here's Hill. Kicks it out to Gandy. Gandy drives for Wesleyan. The ball rolls right over the rim. Hasty pulls down a nice rebound. Mitchell tries a quick pass to Rice. Somebody got a hand on it, so the fast break ends, but Braves maintain possession of the ball. Here's Okoronkwo. Still wants to drive. He'll kick it out to Rice for three. Off. Oh, what a tip in by Hollis Mitchell. And the Braves want a 30-second timeout. They've gone up by five. We'll take a 30-second timeout ourselves. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO. Since 1944, families of Franklin County have called Dingle and Son Mortuary and Crematory in their time of need. Why? Because of the peace of mind received knowing that Dingle and Son will take charge and exceed expectations. Visit DingleMortuary.com. This is Ryan Disborough, your State Farm Insurance Agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1. And welcome back to Salina. The Braves just went up five, called timeout. They're up 69-64 on the road in Salina. Looking to get their first win of the conference season, but still plenty of time left. Six and a half to go. Bolton hands it off to Johnson. Now here's Hill over to Gandy. Bolton way out there, but... He's shown he's willing to shoot from just about anywhere. Now here's Hill driving, kicks it out to a wide open Johnson for three, hits it. 69-67, Braves lead cut to two, six minutes remaining. Hollis Mitchell bringing it down for Ottawa. 
Looks to get things started. Gets it into Hasty. Hasty looking to get it in. He'll fight Bollinger for the open jumper. Misses. Rebound to Wesleyan. And here's Fulton driving up and in and one. Who's that foul going to be called on? That's going to be Bollinger called for the foul. Just his third after he picked up two quick ones in the first half. But this free throw would give Wesley in the lead again. And it rims out. Tied at 69 still. Five and a half minutes to go. Mitchell bringing it down for the Braves. Looking for Rice. He's got it out on the perimeter. Gets a pick, but a switch man. Rice has a mismatch. He's on the 5'9 point guard. Bollinger pulls up for two. Misses. Rebound pulled down by Sylvester for Wesleyan. Fulton looks to push it. Now he'll send it out to Gandy for three. Misses badly. Hollis Mitchell pulls down the board. There's going to be a foul on the rebound. Or no, they'll say that. Might have touched the top of the backboard after it hit the rim. So out of bounds. Five minutes remaining in regulation. We're tied at 69. Hollis Mitchell with the ball at the top of the key. Driving to the right. Now he gets it into Okoronkwo. Fadeaway jumper. Rolls in. Braves regain the lead. 71-69. That's 19 for Okoronkwo. Johnson for Wesleyan. Kicks it back out to Ellis. Moves to the right. Ellis. And here's Fulton. Fulton looks to drive. And misses the shot as the buzzer expires on or sounds on the shot clock. Here's Titus Rice out on the left wing over to Okoronkwo for three. Got it! Braves go up 74-69. They're up five. 4.05 remaining in the game. Hill sends it over to Gandy. Now here's Johnson. Ever since the Braves went into the zone, Wesleyan has had a hard time finding ways to score. Open three for Johnson from deep. Missed. Rice gets the rebound. Braves up five with the ball. Here's Okoronkwo. Tries a quick pass to Hasty, but there was somebody in the way. But now Okoronkwo comes back and... Oh, wow. They're going to say over and back. Wesleyan got the ball, was driving. Okoronkwo dove in, tipped the ball out into the hands of Mitchell. Wow. The Braves never even came close to having possession of that ball. But they're going to say they went over and back. Even after conferring, they're going to say it's over and back. Three and a half minutes to go. Wesleyan gifted the ball down five. Bollinger defending Hill. Now here's... The big man inside loses the ball. Okoronkwo, nice pass to Mitchell, lays it up and in, and it's the seven-point lead for the Braves. Lund lost the ball there. That's his third turnover of the night. Three minutes to go. Braves up seven on the road. And, oh, wow, Wesley almost lost possession. Now Hill driving, kicks it out. Edwards over to Hill for an open three. Off target, offensive rebound for Wesleyan. Now here's Johnson, wants a deep three. Gets it. Four point game and now Wesleyan wants a timeout. And it'll be a full timeout. So we'll go ahead and take a one minute break and then we'll be back with more from Salina. Braves up four, 2.38 to go. This is OU Basketball on KOFO. Confidence. Passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. 
with opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations. We all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. This is Ryan Disbro, your State Farm Insurance agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1660. Are you on Facebook and Twitter? So are we. Be sure to follow us, facebook.com slash KOFO radio, or on Twitter, at KOFO Brad Howard, at KOFO Tiffany, at KOFO Sports, and at KOFO Radio. We're back in Salina, 2.38 remaining in regulation. The Braves holding on to a four-point lead, 76-72, riding Emeka Okoronkwo starting his first game of the season with 22 points, two for two from outside, four for four from the free throw line, and eight of nine from the field overall. Can't ask for much more than that from the senior from Topeka. Braves with the ball. Pass into Hollis Mitchell. Nadek is in there as well. Okoronkwa on the court, so is Bollinger, so is Wright. With the exception of Nadek, he's the starting lineup on the court right now for the Braves. Okoronkwa over to Bollinger at the top of the key. Wright hands it back to Mitchell. They'll run down the shot clock. Mitchell looking to reset the offense. Time running down, five seconds. He gets to get it to Bollinger, but he's going to have to shoot a deep three off the back of the rim, but rebounded by Titus Rice. That's a huge offensive board. Now Nadek fighting off tough defense from Wesley, and Mitchell's got the ball again. And now the Braves will call a timeout. And we'll take another one-minute break. 1.51 to go. Braves up 76-72. This is OU Basketball on KOFO. Kramer Pharmacy, downtown Ottawa, hopes you're enjoying this KOFO sports broadcast and wishes all the area teams good luck this season. Call Kramer Pharmacy today and ask about their convenient MedSync program that allows you to have all your prescriptions filled at the same time each month. Call 242-2055. At State Farm, our goal is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This is State Farm agent Keith King in Ottawa. Let me help you protect what's most important to you. Give my office a call at 785-242-9435 or stop by at 111 South Main Street in Ottawa. Anyone can call themselves a construction company, slap a sign on the side of their truck, and drive around town looking for work. Is that who you want to hire? No, you're smarter than that. Wise Guys Construction at 108 North Main in Ottawa has been in business for 13 years, building new residential homes, adding additions and finishing basements, solving commercial structure needs for businesses, and repairing damage left behind from fire or water. When it comes to who you hire for residential and commercial construction needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction at 785 Two nine fifty six fifty one, And we are back in Salina. The Braves up 76-72. The women's game did not go as well. It's an 80-55 to loss, but the men's team has hung in the entire way here. They find themselves up by four with just under two minutes remaining. Throw-in goes to Bullinger. Here's Hollis Mitchell at the top of the key. Eight seconds left on the shot clock, and there's the foul. Going to be called on Kansas Wesleyan. Going to be called on Terrell Gandy. Foul number five on Wesleyan, so it'll be a throw-in for the Braves. A minute 43 to go. Devin Perez is in the game. He'll be throwing it in. Goes for the lob to Rice. Rice can't quite get to it. Now the fight for the ball and Edwards and Mitchell both went after it. And they'll say it went off of Edwards, so it's Ottawa ball. They'll sneak it into Okoronkwo. Now here's Titus Rice for three out of, but Okoronkwo gets the offensive board. Now here's Titus Rice driving. Should have held on to the ball and run off from the clock. Instead, Edwards is coming down fast. Wesleyan down four with a minute 20 to go. They know they need points. Here's Hill working against Okoronkwo. Good, but off to Edwards against Rice. 
Now Johnson kicks it over to Yandy, who goes up for the floater and hits it, 76-74. Wesleyan wants a 30-second timeout, and we will oblige. 76-74, a minute six to go. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO. Your underwear is the first thing you put on and the last thing you take off. Why would you settle for anything less than the best-feeling underwear on the planet? MeUndies will deliver your new favorite pair of underwear right to your door. It's made with a fabric that is scientifically proven to be three times softer than cotton. Now, if they aren't the most comfortable, best-feeling undies you've ever had, they'll refund you and let you keep your first pair for free. Shipping is free, and for a limited time, listeners to this station get 20% off their first order. But you have to go to MeUndies.com slash comfy. That's MeUndies.com slash comfy. We're back in Salina. Only a minute six remaining in regulation. The Braves are up 76-74. No full court press for Wesleyan. So let Ottawa use the shot clock and see what happens. Mitchell calls for Bollinger and gets the ball in the wing. Sends it over to Rice, sets the pick. Rice then kicks it back out to Bollinger. He'll hold it. Sends it back out to right here, Joe Caronquo. Hands it off to Hollis Mitchell. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Mitchell working at the top of the key over to Titus Rice. Rice drives in. A lot of contact. This is the layup. Fight for the rebound. Wesleyan ends up with it, and Logan Bollinger is going to be called for a foul as he dives after it. A lot of contact as Rice went up for that layup. Nothing called. That's team foul number seven, so that makes it one and one for Wesleyan. They could tie if Hill hits both of these. Braves clinging to that 76-74 lead, 36 seconds left. Hill's first shot, off target, a fight for it. No call, a lot of contact both ways, no call. Now Hollis Mitchell fouled deliberately. That still won't bring them into the bonus. Wesleyan's coach wants a foul, but Bollinger and Lund were both tied up going after that rebound. I'm not sure how you would have decided who to call the foul on. They were pretty well tangled up. 30.1 to go. Braves with that two-point lead. And they could run the, shot, run the clock down to a tenth of a second, so you'll almost certainly see a foul quickly here. Devin Perez to throw it in, gets it to Mitchell, who's fouled immediately. And Mitchell will go to the line to shoot one and one. Two free throws here would make it a two-possession game. That would be huge with only 28.6 seconds left. Hollis Mitchell with nine points to his name today, five of those off of free throws. Okoronkwo will come off. Hasty comes on, the defensive specialist. Mitchell's free throw rolls in. Three-point lead for the Braves, 77-74. 28.6 left on the clock. He'll shoot one more. Off target. And Wesleyan comes up with the rebound, almost loses control. 22 seconds left. They're down by three. Hill with the ball at the top of the key. He looks to drive. Goes up against Bullinger. Draws the foul. Misses the layup. Bullinger's claiming he was vertical. They'll call a block. 15.8 seconds left. Bullinger has fouled out. So if this were to go to overtime, that would be an important piece to be missing for the Braves. Bullinger is pleading his case, but he is disqualified. Devin Perez will be the one to sub on for. Wesley is down three, but with two free throws to shoot. It'll be Ryan Hill, who's five of seven from the line today. 
14 points. If he hits them both, they'll need to foul immediately. First shot, good. 77-75. Braves lead cut to two. 15.8 to go. One more shot for Hill. So the shot is up and good. It's a one-point game. And we'll go ahead and take 30 seconds here as Wesleyan uses a timeout. Braves up one with just under 16 seconds to go. You're listening to Ottawa Braves basketball here on KOFO, 1220 and 103.7 FM. Eric Price and his staff at the Lamb Roberts Funeral Homes are proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast and honored to help so many families in the community with compassionate care when it's needed most. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Ottawa, Baldwin City, and Overbrook. Imagine what you could do if you didn't have knee pain. The freedom and ability you once had would improve your quality of life. Not all knee pain requires surgery. Call Franklin County Chiropractic today at 242-9393 and schedule your Believe It or Not special $17 knee exam. Welcome back to Salina. We're on the campus of Kansas Wesleyan University where the Braves are clinging to a 77-76 lead over Kansas Wesleyan. Paulus Mitchell, Alex Casey, Devin Perez, Titus Wright, and Jacob Niedig on the floor for the Braves. Braves are 16 of 19 from the free throw stripe today, so that bodes well. They'll no doubt be fouled immediately after the throw in. Paulus Mitchell breaks the wide open down the court. And he runs the ball down, and he's fouled after 1.3 seconds run off. So we're down to 14 and a half. Two important free throws, well, a one-and-one one situation. So hopefully two free throws coming up for Hollis Mitchell. He's six of eight from the line today. Braves up one. First shot. Rolls in. Two-point game. And Wesleyan wants another timeout, so we'll take another 30 seconds. And we'll be back. Brave 78, Coyote 76, 14 and a half seconds left. This is OU Basketball on KOFO. Are you providing care for someone who is aging or has a disability? While the caregiving journey is meaningful, you may find yourself running on empty. To be your best for them, it is important to take time to refuel, refresh, and renew. Respite Care can give you that time while ensuring your loved one has quality care. For more information, contact the Kansas Aging and Disability Resource Center at 1-855-200-2372 or visit kdads.ks.gov. Sponsored by the Kansas Lifespan Respite Coalition, aired in cooperation with the Kansas Association of Broadcasters and this station. Welcome back to Salina. Still a surprising number of timeouts remaining if the coaches elect to use them. Wesleyan has one, and the Braves still have three in their back pocket. 14 and a half seconds left. The Braves are up 78-76. Paulus Mitchell has one free throw left, the back end of a one-and-one one after he hit the first, trying to make this a three-point game. And forced Wesleyan into a situation where they have to hit a shot from behind the arc to tie it up. Mitchell, Nadig, Okoronkwo, Hasty, and Wright. The five on the floor for the Braves. The free throw is up and it rolls in. It's short, but it rolls the right way. So 10 seconds to go. It's a three-point game. Here's Edwards trying to look for an open three. They're going to have to shoot it for long distance. It's well short. Two seconds left. Another three. It's blocked. It's blocked at the last second. And the Braves are going to win their first game of KCAC play. 79-76 on the road over Kansas Wesleyan. What a play at the end to force a difficult shot and then get a hand on it. And the Braves advance to one and two in KCAC play. A hard-fought game throughout. 
couldn't ask for a more exciting finish. Wesleyan had the opportunity to tie at the end. They couldn't get the shot off or couldn't get a clean look. And the Braves win it once again, 79-76. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with the recap here on KOFO. A college education means more today than ever before. And that's why Ottawa University strives to equip our students with the education needed to enter the workforce prepared to make an impact. With the addition of engineering, Ottawa University now offers 22 majors at the campus in Ottawa, Kansas, with even more programs available online. Contact us today to find out more at ottawa.edu or by calling 800-755-5200. It's Black Friday at JCPenney. Doors open Thursday at 3 p.m., so rush in and save up to 40% off major appliances. Like a Samsung French door refrigerator, just $9.94. Plus, get special financing with your JCPenney credit card and earn double rewards on all major appliance purchases in-store and at jcp.com starting Thursday through 5 p.m. Friday. That's getting your pennies worth. JCPenney. GE, GE Profile, and GE Cafe limited to 10% off savings. Subject to credit approval. Must request a ton of purchase. Minimum monthly payments required. Available in select stores. Restrictions and exclusion supply. See store associate or jcp.com for details. Financing terms available at 11 to 11.30. And what a finish here in Salina. The women's game does not go Ottawa's way as the Lady Braves lose it 80-55. to But the men's game, a back-and-forth affair the entire way. And a hard-fought battle. They were found themselves down at halftime with, a, with six different players in foul trouble, picking up two fouls in that first half. But they were down... Oh, it looks like they were, sorry, they were down 48-45 after all the free throws. But in the second half, they come back out, score the Coyotes 34-28 and come away with a 79-76 victory riding the back of Emeka Okoronkwo starting for the first time this year. Of course, 28 points, goes 8 for 9 from the field and 4 for 4 from the free throw line and was indispensable. So was Hollis Mitchell down the stretch, scoring 12 points, 6 assists, had a steal, and 8 of 10 from the free throw line and hit some big ones down the stretch. So the Braves improve to 1-2 and two on the season for, well, in conference play and improve to 3-5 and five overall. Kansas Wesleyan drops to 1-2. and two. Next up for the Braves will be... Next up for the Braves will be December 1st at Oklahoma Wesleyan. Women's team at 6 and the men's team at 8. Thank you for listening. I'm David Potter with KOFO Sports. This has been OU Basketball on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of Ottawa University Braves Basketball on KOFO. Brought to you by Modern Woodman Agent Dale Pearson, Dr. Hale Family Dentistry, Kansas State Bank, Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, the Ottawa Recreation Commission, and by State Farm Insurance Agent Ryan Dispro, Ransom Memorial Hospital, Sutton's Jewelry, Car Star, Messenger's Home Furnishings. Also by Dingle & Sun Mortuary, Ottawa University, Eminent Sports Shop, the Ottawa Herald, Wise Guys Construction, Kramer Pharmacy, Franklin County Chiropractic, and Constantino's Price Chopper, State Farm Insurance Agent Keith King, Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, and People's Bank. For more information about our next OU Brave Sports broadcast, log on to the KOFO Sports page at KOFO.com and listen to 103.7 FM for the KOFO Sports Calendar. This has been an exclusive presentation from your sports source for East Central Kansas, KOFO.